I want to turn your attention towards Psalm 84, verse 7. That's going to be my key scripture. If you remember this key scripture, you will remember my message all your life. Psalm 84, verse 7, and it reads like this. I've got my Urdu Bible, but I believe that some of you have brought your English Bible so you can open it. And listen to this. Uh, my message starts from here. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. They go from strength to strength. strength. This is not what we're experiencing in the world. Yeah. People are going from weakness to weakness. Yeah. From negative to negative. Yeah. From sickness to sickness. Yeah. But here... David's talking about a group of people who go from strength to strength. Now, who are these people who go from strength to strength? We have to see the whole verse. It says, these are those people who present before God. These are the people who go to the house of God. This is the group. That goes to the house of God. And my Bible says it's a military term. Here am I. Uh -huh. They go to house of God. And they say God exactly like Isaiah said. I am here send me. Yeah. These people. This group of people who go to the house of God. And they say God I am here. You can use me. Yeah. You can send me anywhere. Yeah. These are the people who go from a strength yeah. to strength. Awesome. Folks, if you want strength, if you want to go from strength to strength, you should be a people who go to the house of God yeah. Awesome. Yeah. and present yourself before God and say, God, I'm available. Do anything you want. Use me as a tool. My topic tonight is my father's house. It's a father's day. What good day. What better day to talk about Father's house. We go to Father's house and say, Father, I am available. I am present. I am here. You can send me anywhere you want. Never go to church just to attend the church, but go to church to present yourself and say, God, I am available. You can use me for anything. I will clean the church. I will talk to the people about you. I will sing for you. I will help your people, your church, and you can use me as a tool. I am present there. Now I'm going to talk to you about those people who go to the house of God. They are those people who do not get stagnant or stay one place, but they go from strength to strength. The number one verse that I want you to listen to is Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, verse 4. Yeah. I sought the Lord. And he I sought the Lord. Uh, the translation says, I went to the Lord. I went to the Lord. Where? I went to the Lord. I appeared before the Lord. What happened? If you go to the Lord, a lot of time we think, well, should I go to church or not? Will it be any valuable? You know, will I get anything? I went to the Lord. What happened? Listen to I went to the Lord and he heard me. He heard me. Hey, this is amazing. A lot of time of a problem is nobody hears me. I call them and they don't answer me. But I sought the Lord and he heard me. If you want your answers to be given to you, you go to God in the house of God and your prayers will be answered. And he answered me. What did he do? Listen to this one. And delivered me from all my fears. Delivered me from all my fear. In the house of God, yeah. folks, let me tell you, the whole world, even the rich people, people have all the possessions, people who have big house cars and traveled a lot, they have gold and silver, they are all fearful about tomorrow, they are all fearful about their uh, sickness, they are fearful about people and they are fearful about what's happening uh, in Iran and what's happening in uh, Japan and what's happening in Russia, people are fearful, but those who went to God, those who have been to God, those who are in the house of God, those who have presented themselves to God, they are delivered from any fear. Yeah. Deliverance from fear. And I think uh, if anything that we need to be delivered from is fear. 
and what delivers you from fear is going to God, going to the Father's house, house of God. You are not sitting here in vain. You are not wasting your time, but you are here to go from strength to strength. What gives you strength is your fear is gone and you're full of strength. Strength to strength. And listen to this. Uh, the fifth verse of the same chapter says like this. They looked to him. And, when... and I looked at him. I looked at him. Folks, go to house of God. Don't to look to anybody else. Come on. Come on. Very good, Don't even come to the house of God to look at the pew. Uh -huh. Or the pulpit. Uh -huh. Don't come here to look at your enemy or somebody who don't, you, you don't like. <laughs> Don't even come to look at the preacher. Preacher may be very handsome, like me. <laughs> but don't come to look at me. Go to the house of God to look at the Lord. Come I on. looked at him. <laughs> Father's house. God's people, you are in Father's house. And come to the Father's house to look at the face of Father. What happens when you look at the Father? What happened there? They looked at him and were radiant. What? Wow. We're radiant. Radiant. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, if you if you miss it, if you look at anybody else, you will be discouraged. You will be dismayed, disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Many people today are disappointed because they bank upon somebody else. Yeah. They lean upon somebody else. Yeah. They were looking to somebody else. Yeah. They were looking to a scholar. Don't look to the scholar. Don't look to the musical instruments. Don't look to the leader, but look to God. Yeah. But if you look to God, yeah. if you look to God, you go from strength to strength. Yeah. You go from a strength to that. And secondary, secondary says that faces were radiant. You want your faces to be radiant? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't need all kind of creams for your face to be radiant. Even though you have been using all that cream and so expensive, you know. But you know, the way to make your faces radiant shine is to go to the house of the Lord and present before And present yourself and say, God, is there anything I can do for you? You use me. I'm available. God, you have delivered me from all my fear. And you go from strength to strength. I'm born in a very poor family and I had nothing to eat where I was born. I've lived in a junkie, 10 by 10 room, six of us. No power, 51 degree temperature. It's like sleeping in an oven. But I've, I've seen people look at me and they say, hey, your face is shining. Uh -huh. I, I haven't had food for two days. My face is shining. I won't tell you because you have met the Lord. Your face starts shining. There was a man who went to the mountaintop. 40 days he didn't eat anything. When he came back from the mountaintop, his enemies who wanted to throw stones on him and wanted to kill him, the enemies came to him and said, Moses, we can't even look at your face. Forget about throwing stones on you. We can't even look at your face. You, why? Your face is shining. Your face, I, I won't tell you, don't try to destroy your enemy, but just look to God and your face will be shining. The enemy cannot face you. The enemy cannot do anything wrong to you. You go from strength to strength in your father's house. You present yourself. You say, God, here am I. Use me. Don't go to see anything. But you know, a lot of time, you can go to a place to see somebody and you will come back discouraged. Yeah. But if you go to the house of God to see God, your faces will be radiant. Yeah. Psalm 65 verse 4. Psalm 65 verse 4. Listen to this one. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you. What? That... Blessed is the man whom God chooses when God chooses, we think when God will choose me, he will give me healing power. We think that when God cho cho chooses me, he will make me into a big preacher. I'll go to America to preach. But here we find when God chooses you, he allows you to approach into him. Yeah. By very privilege of getting close to God is a privilege yeah. close to God. You know, when God chooses you, the first thing he does, he allows you to come close to him. Yeah. Yeah. 
in the house of God allows you know a lot of time somebody speaks to us and we say well what are you saying I didn't hear it I didn't understand it why because we're so so far you go close and then you start hearing it clearly God wants you and I to understand everything that he's saying. God wants you and I to hear everything he's saying so that we can understand his plan and he will allow you to come. When you go with the heart to present yourself before God, when you want God to use you, God will say, come close, come close. And he will keep you so close that you will understand his total plan. And you'll be so happy. You will not be confused. In the church. I don't know. I'm in the church 19 years, but I'm very confused, confused. I don't know what's going on. It's because you are in the building. You are not in the church. You haven't come to the father's house. But if you come to father's house with the idea of giving yourself, God, I'm available. Use me. You will be out of fear. Your fear will be, will be gone. And you will be a fortunate person. You'll be in the house of God. He, he, he allows you to come close to him. And what else? Listen to this one. That he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied. We shall be what? Satisfied. Say satisfied. Wow. Wow. Say satisfied. satisfied. The whole world is not satisfied. Nine cars, 15 rooms, eight bathrooms, 200 dresses in the wardrobe 19 pair of shoes been to america 19 times but not satisfied two and a half million dollars in the bank not satisfied because this satisfaction is not in the world the satisfaction is in the house of god in the house of god and where in the house of God? In the house of God where there are people who present themselves to God and they say, God, use me. I belong to you. I am your vessel. Do whatever you want to do in my life. I have come to just look at your face. I have not come to look at anybody. I have come to hear you. Your faces will be radiant and you will be satisfied. Yeah. You will never say, okay, I don't have it. Maybe, it could be, don't know. I don't understand. But you will say, I have it. I love it. I thank God. I'm satisfied. God wants us to be in his house, in my father's house. Now, I want you to read this scripture, Genesis, first book. Very easy to find. Open your Bible, it's there. 17 chapter of Genesis. 17 chapter of Genesis, verse 1. Verse 1. Listen to this verse 1. You will be amazed, yeah. When Abram was 99 years when old. When Abram was 99 years old, you know, when you talk to the older people, they say, hmm. <laughs> I have some experience. <laughs> Don't talk to me, child. You know how old I am. You know, I've gone through a lot of things. I've got all the experience and here Abraham is 99 years old and he's talked to God many times and here God comes to Abraham and what does he say? The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. What? God? You're introducing yourself to me once again? You think I don't know you? A <laughs> lot of time God has to come to experience people who have been through a lot of things and have a lot of experience yeah. but God has to come and introduce himself to you. He said, wow. Abraham, I'm the mighty God. And you know, something must have happened that Abraham's faith is gone. I don't know if God can do everything. I'm the mighty God. I can do anything. He came to Abraham. He said, I'm the mighty God. I can do. But what he said, he told Abraham one thing and he touched the very part that needs to be touched. What did he say? He said, I'm the mighty God. Walk before me and be ah. blameless. He said, you want to be blameless? You want to be faultless? You want to be perfect? Not because of your age, not because of your experience, not because you have been to places, not because you have spoken to king, not because of the miracles that you've done. If you want to be blameless, if you want to be perfect, you walk before me. Walk before me. Walk in my house or walk in front of my face. Not walk before people. Don't show people. Don't get... Clap from the people. 
and don't just get appreciation from people but walk before God and you know there's a group of people who come to the house of God and they say God I'm not walking for this man or that man I'm walking before you and I want to make you happy and my Christian life is for you I'm going to do everything you want me to do when you walk before God what happens you become blameless People cannot blame you because you're walking before God. But if you start trying to uh, win people and start trying to show people what you can do, you can never, cannot become blameless. If you want to be blameless, you walk before me. I want you to read the scriptures, Psalm 16 and verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence... It's fullness a, of joy. There is joy. What kinds of joy? Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Incomplete joy? No. Unlimited joy. Yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? In the presence of God. In the house of God. In the house of God. God gives you joy for an hour or two, a week or two, month or two. No, it's forever and ever. He gives you joy and he doesn't mix any sorrows in it. And he gives you joy, he doesn't take it back. In the house of God, when God's people gather together in my father's house and they say, Father, I have come to your house. I present myself. I want you to use me. I want you to deliver me from my fear. Give me joy that is forever and ever. You become a person whose faces start shining and radiant and people will know you all over the world who you are. You don't have to send flyers about you people will know who you are they'll look at you Psalm 95 verse 2 Psalm 95 verse 2 listen to this one yes let us come before his presence with thanksgiving let us shout joyfully to him with psalms what read it again please let us come before his presence let us come before his presence for what because it is Sunday <laughs> moreover Pastor Tuck asked me to come today. Don't come to the house of God because it's Sunday. Because you don't want to miss a meeting. But come before in his presence. Why? Listen to this. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Because you're so full of thanksgiving. When you hit the gate, when you hit the door, you should be full of thanksgiving. A lot of people say, hey, it was very hard for me to Worship the Lord. It's very hard for me to praise the Lord. You know why? When your heart is full of thanksgiving. When your heart is full of thanksgiving, you come in the presence of God and your hands automatically goes in the air and you're worshiping God because you're full of thanksgiving. In the house of God, you go from strength to strength. Why? Because he has filled you with thanksgiving and you will go from strength to strength. Thanksgiving becomes your strength. Because of giving thanks to the Lord, you are going from strength to strength. Now listen to this, Isaiah 9th chapter, verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 9th chapter, verse 3 and 4. Listen to this one. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. When, as men rejoice when they divide they spoil. When do they divide the spoil? Before the fight? No. no, after the fight. After the fight, not before the, after the fight. You, you are in the fight and after the fight you are dividing the spoil. In the presence of God, you will be like a person who is a victorious man. Who has, you know, you are not only fighting the battle, but you have won the battle. And wherever you go, even though things are happening, you know, battle is becoming tougher and tougher. Battle is becoming tougher and tougher. But the good news is we are winning. Yeah. Good news is that we are winning. And because you're winning, you are full of joy. And I, I, I want to put a little icing 
I want to put a little icing on the cake. Ready for the icing on the cake? Yeah. Little icing on the cake. And that is uh, 1 Samuel, 2nd chapter. 1 Samuel, 2nd chapter, 21st verse. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Okay. God is speaking about Hannah. And I don't know why. Listen to this one. Yeah. Could you continue to read? Uh, meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. He was talking about Sa Hannah, and he switched the topic and came to Samuel. Why is he, what is he talking about Samuel? He said, meanwhile, Samuel grew before the Lord. Grew? There. Many people complain, I'm not growing. My son is not growing. My wife is not growing. I'm in this church 19 years, but I'm not growing. Don't blame the church that you're not growing. Yeah. <laughs> You have been coming to church, but you never came in the presence of God. You grow not in the building. You don't grow because you're sitting in the chair. You don't grow because you're sitting in the front seat. You don't grow because you're hearing the music. You only grow because you are in the presence. Every individual tonight must check that you are coming to a building or you're coming in the presence of God. When you come to the presence of God, you grow. If somebody comes to me, he said, Tony, I'm not growing, I will say, go to God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do go. No, you don't go. Uh -huh. Anybody who goes to the presence of God grows. That's right. Moreover, you and I know this. This guy, Samuel, was in a place where there were two idiots. Uh -huh. Two idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Hufni and Phineas. He's not saying, Mama, Daddy, why did you put me here? These people don't let me eat any food. I don't even have a mattress. There's no place to sleep. These people are very wicked. Why did you put me here? But this man is growing. Folks, don't complain. Don't talk to me about the situation. Don't talk to me other people who are ridiculing you. Don't talk to me about the people who are standing against you. And that person hates me. And that's why I'm going to leave the church. No, you can still grow because you're in the presence of God. I go in the presence of God and I give myself to the Lord. I went to the Lord and I sought him and I asked him to deliver me from all my fear. And I go from strength to strength. Yeah. Samuel grew. Samuel grew in, in spite of negative situation. But I have no mention in the whole Bible. There is no mention of any reference where Samuel complained about Hufni or Phineas or about any situation, about his fooding, about anything, even though he went through tough time. But no, nothing happened. Why? Because he was in the presence of God. Wow. He was growing. Wow. Folks, I have had very tough time in my life. But I have no complaints because when people were ridiculing me and they were standing against me, at the same time, God was taking me from strength yeah, to strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second part of the icing is this. Second part of the icing is this. Second Kings, third chapter, first verse. Second King, third chapter, first verse. Listen to this one. Now, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. No, a lot of people don't want war. War. There was a long, long war. Not a small war. Christian life is a long war. And this war is against David's family and Saul's family. The war is between flesh and spirit. You know, Saul is spirit. And David is, Saul is flesh. And the David is spirit. The war between flesh and the spirit is not a little one. It's a big one. You go to a marriage place, there's war there. You come to church, there's a war there. You go to your home, war there. Between husband and wife, between neighbor and you, between brother and sister, there is a war. Everywhere people will ridicule. They will laugh at you and they will talk about your values. There is a war. But what I want you to notice here, there was a big war. But listen to this one. But David grew stronger and but stronger. David grew stronger in spite of war. In spite of war. David grew stronger and stronger. What, what else? And Saul grew weaker and weaker. Wow. Wow. Yes. One is getting weaker and weaker. 
the other one is growing stronger stronger but let listen to this question i ask you a question who had the power who was the king saul was the king saul was the king and david had no power he can't sign any documents he cannot do anything Polit political team is not in his hand he has no money he has no gold he has no army control but it's going growing he's growing he's becoming stronger and stronger and Saul who has got money people army sword weapon of war is becoming weaker and weaker what makes you weaker is not having the presence of God what makes you stronger is presence of God why David said I would rather be a storekeeper doorkeeper in the house of God I will stay in the one thing I have a desire of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life somebody somebody who lives in a palace and has gold and silver under his control and the whole army under his control but still getting weaker and weaker and somebody living in the wilderness but because he is in God yeah. he looks at the face I look at the face of Lord my God and I'm radiant I'm blessed I'm growing and growing and growing and growing you want to grow you want to be successful you need to come to father's house in closing I will say these two things. Somebody said, in my father's house, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. Somebody said, in my father's house, there is a place of rest for me and for you. In my father's house, I am preparing a place there is a prepared place in father's house. You want rest? Go to father's house. You want blessing? Father's house. You want your faces to be radiant? Father's house. You want to have success? Go to father's house. And the same man is providing something else. Somebody said, I will go to my father's house because my father's many hired servants get more food to eat than they need this man has realized now my father house is better than any other place yeah. people can hire you people can give you money people can love you temporarily people can show you things they will show you good and give you bad they will show you gold and give you dirt but in my father's house I will go to my father's house because in my father's house many hired servants get more food than they need in my father's house there is food that's why I will go to my father's house because if I look to my father, my face will be radiant and I will be delivered from all my fear. I will grow every day from strength to strength. Folks, if anybody not growing, don't blame anybody. Just blame yourself that I'm not looking to him. When you look to him, start looking to him. Your situation will be different. You'll see your situation and say, God, I'm sorry that I have been looking to people. I, uh, I, I did not come to building. It, it's a church. church is not a crowd. Crowd is not a church. Group is not a church. Mob is not a church. What is the church? Is the living stones together is a church. I want to be a living stone, not the crowd. Father, help me. Make me living stone. Yeah. Let me go from yeah. strength to strength yeah. and take the discouragement from, out from me yeah. and, and deliver me from all my fears. If you want to pray a prayer like that, you have been very discouraged. You don't know where to go. You have been totally discouraged and you think God is not happy with you. No, that's not the case. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. There's a place of rest for you. And tonight, Father's house is ready. If you say, God, I want to come to you. Help me. Just stand. If, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you have never done this before. Or you have done it, but you have gone away from God. And you're not very happy. You're not growing. You're not going anywhere. You're going in circles. Nothing big is happening in your life. You were not full of joy. You got to get the joy for two hours or three. But you want to have a permanent joy. Say, Jesus, I come to your house. And I want to be radiant. I want to go from strength to strength. 
I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you have a place ready for us. And you want us to be in your house. You want our faces to be radiant. You want us to be victorious people who are dividing the spoil and so happy because we have won the battle. And Father, we go stronger and stronger every day. We thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the people who are standing and we ask you to touch them and let them know you as you are and bless them abundantly, Lord. And every one of us who are sitting here, we need you and we ask you to teach us how to dwell in your house.